All right. Um, good evening, everybody. Good evening, sir. I want to thank the Lord for the grace that he has given us again to gather in his presence. And I also want to appreciate the leadership of uh, the School of Prayer for this privilege given me to bring the word of God to us on this platform. I do not take it for granted. It's a privilege and I appreciate it so much. So as we continue um, today in God's word, I want us to pray. I want us to tell the Lord to open the eyes of our understanding. Let's tell him, let's tell him that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened, that he brings us into fruitful knowledge of his word so that his word will have impact upon our lives, upon our spirit, soul, and body, and it will cause us to be fruitful for him. He will cause us to be fruitful for him. the topic that we have this evening to look at um, is Jesus mediator and intercessor Jesus mediator and intercessor now before we begin to look at um, Jesus as the mediator and intercessor I'm just praying that uh, time will permit us today to fully look at what um, this message entails today by the grace of God I'm trusting God for speed okay now before we begin to look at it now I want us to see I know that we are you know we have been some of us have been accustomed to that scripture that we regard as the Lord's prayer huh? in Matthew chapter 6 now when the disciples um, of Jesus told him to teach them how to pray you know uh, the second item in the pattern that Jesus gave them actually has to do with intercession the second item because he started with our father he said when you pray say this our father hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come now the first item was adoration worship okay hallowed be thy name but the second item in that pattern of prayer was actually intercession now i'm i'm saying this to make us to see that if the if in the pattern that jesus gave us um there is an item of the prayer of intercession there it therefore tells us how important intercession is to god it therefore tells us how important how important how importantly it takes that ministry of intercession so if it were not necessary jesus would not have you know allowed it to be in that pattern that he gave his disciples so it means that we all also as disciples of jesus we have that ministry okay given to us uh, from the lord now this, like I said, it is because the ministry of intercession is important and the reason is because it allows the kingdom of God to find expression here on earth. Okay, now it has been said that it 
it looks as if God cannot do anything on earth except that he finds you know a people okay who are praying except he finds a man at least a man okay who um, stands to permit God to give expression to his agenda on earth so we see in Revelation chapter 5 verse 10 you know how the Bible says that he has made us kings and priests unto our God so I'm just trying to see the reason why the ministry of intercession is very important and how importantly God is taking this ministry so the Bible says that he has made us uh, unto our God kings and priests so generally every believer actually has that ministry of intercession generally okay we all have that ministry we we all have that priestly ministry okay of intercession because if you are talking about you know mediation if you are talking about intercession we are talking about the same thing we are talking about the ministry okay of the priests now but i want to quickly say this even though i'm not going to enter into it fully i'm going to defy it till later time uh before we round off now let me quickly say this that however though we all have the ministry we have all been given the ministry of intercession we all have that role that priestly role to play as his disciples okay however i want us to know this that standing in the office of a priest or standing in the office of an intercessor is actually more than just praying the prayer of intercession praying the prayers of intercession is not the same as standing in that office there is more to standing in the office of an intercessor or a priest than praying there is more there is more to it than praying there is more to that office than prayer okay i will see in the scripture okay what i'm actually saying so for us to come into that office of an intercessor for us to come into that office uh, that office of a priest now you must get me clearly now from what i've said so far i've demarcated between you know just praying prayers of intercession okay and standing in the office of an intercessor there are two different things so for us to come into that office there are requirements that we must meet there are requirements that we must meet now i'm going to defy it that's what i was saying the other day. i'm going to defy it to later time towards the ending of this message okay i'm not going to go into it now but i just want to quickly establish that first now so that we just have you know um uh, a scripture as a backup for today's message um uh, i want us to look at um, um hebrew chapter 9 because of that i'm just going to pick a verse verse 19 hebrews 9 verse 19 and uh, sorry verse 9 uh, verse 15 rather verse 15 and then we are going to look at chapter 12 verse 24 hebrews 9 verse 15 he said for this cause is the mediator of the new testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance so i just want us to notice that um, that that um, scripture okay it says for this cause he is the mediator of the new covenant the mediator of the new covenant the initiator of the new covenant but how did he mediate how did he initiate the new covenant he did it by death 
okay now this is one of the things that i said i'm going to defer i'm not going i'm still not going to talk about it now but i just want to point it out how did he become the mediator okay he said for this cause he is the mediator of the new testament that by means of death I believe you are beginning to see what I'm actually saying the other time when I said that there is more to, you know, being standing in the office of an intercessor than praying, just praying the prayer of intercession. Okay, so the, that, the, that verse is that, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgression, <laughs> excuse me that were under the first testament they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance now chapter 12 verse 24 let me let us quickly see chapter 12 verse 24 chapter 12 verse 24 of that same hebrew now it says and to jesus the mediator of the new covenant to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Now, this passage, like the like the chapter nine that we read, he mentioned Jesus as the mediator of the new covenant, but he didn't stop there. He said, "And to the blood of sprinkling." Now, Jesus became the mediator by the shedding of his blood, and you know that you cannot. And you know you you can't you cannot um um fully take the blood of an animal without first killing that animal okay you cannot drain the whole of the blood okay because the bible says that without the shedding of blood there can never be what the remission of sin all right now let me just stop it here uh, here i will come back to um to it later now i want us to quickly see i want us to see the earthly intercessory ministry of jesus and consider how important this ministry is i want us to see you know the earthly ministry of jesus now if we go to mark chapter 1 verse 38 mark chapter 1 uh verse 38 there's something i want us to see there now in verse 38 the bible says and he said unto them let us go into the next towns that i may preach there also for therefore came i forth now just because of time i don't want to begin to read okay let me just bring it uh backward a little verse 35 he said and in the morning rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed verse 36 says and simon and they that were with him followed after him verse 37 and when they had found him they said unto him all men seek for thee verse 38 now says and he said unto them let us go into the next towns that i may preach there also for therefore came i forth now the question now is why did jesus say to them in that verse 38 let us go to the next towns that i may preach there also for therefore came i forth why did he say that don't forget that he actually went to a solitary place according to our uh, what verse 35 made us to understand he actually went to a solitary place to pray and you know everybody started looking for him. his disciples started looking for him and when they found him at last what he told them was that he said let us go to the next town okay into the next town to do what to preach for what reason he said because that is why i came why did he say that now it means that when jesus actually went to pray it means that his prayer has actually been about those towns. I don't know if somebody is following. Okay. It, it, it means that 
for Jesus to tell them when they found him, when they said, oh, you know, all men seek for thee, and he, he told them, he said, let us go to the next towns for uh, to preach for there, you know, therefore I came I forth. That it means that when Jesus actually went to pray, the prayer he has been praying in that solitary place has actually been about those towns. The prayer must have been about intercession for those towns. He, 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 he has been praying ahead before going there. So when they now found him, he said, let us go. Now it is time to go. Why? Because he has prayed. Brethren, listen to me. It is not time to go forward until you have prayed ahead of time. It is not time to go forward until you have prayed ahead of time it is not time to embark on that journey that you want to that you want to embark on until you have prayed ahead of time it is not time to go into that city to preach until you have prayed ahead of time it is not time to go into that marriage until you have prayed ahead of time it is not time to go into that business until you have prayed ahead of time. So the prayer of Jesus has actually been about those times. So about those towns. So when Jesus, when the disciples eventually found him, he said, "Let us go to the next towns for to preach." For therefore came I forth. Amen. So this is an example. This is actually an example of Jesus interceding over cities interceding over towns before going there to preach so this is one of the examples of the intercessory ministry of jesus on it he prayed over towns so it means that as believers as people who have been saddled with the ministry of prayer with the ministry of intercession it therefore means that you we cannot but pray over towns we cannot but pray over cities we cannot but pray over villages we cannot you know but pray over territories because jesus did that as an example don't forget the topic is jesus mediator and intercessor okay now we are looking at the intercessory ministry of jesus on earth praise god so it is glaring here that one of the principles of Jesus before going to any town is that he soaked them in prayers ahead before he goes there. This means that intercession must be ahead. Amen. Intercession must be ahead. And an intercession must be ahead of Satan's move. And intercession must be ahead of Satan's move. You see, now the way we can be ahead of the devil, the way we can be ahead of the kingdom of darkness is by revelation and by prayer. Because revelation is actually the fuel for our prayer life. A man without revelation will not have a prayer life. A man without revelation will not be able to pray effectively. Revelation is the fuel for an effective prayer life amen okay so the way to be ahead is to pray now uh, uh, let me show you um let me buttress this principle you know um by what i also see in um genesis genesis chapter one i found out a principle in in the scripture um that in colonizing territories Amen. I believe you are with me. In colonizing territories, preaching does not go first. Prayers must go ahead so that we secure the activity of the Spirit over the land before we arrive. Now you see, we cannot secure the activity, the move of the Spirit over territories, over lands, okay, until we have permitted the Spirit to move in our prayers so intercession prayers is actually giving permission to god giving permission to the to the spirit of god to have a free course to move on earth to 
for the agenda of God to find expression. So now to corroborate that, if you go to Genesis chapter one, verse uh, two and three, Genesis chapter one, verse two and three, you will see something there. I want to show you something there. You know, the Bible says in verse one, says in the beginning God created heaven and earth, and the verse two, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And now I want you to pay attention to this. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So you can see now verse, okay, let me read verse 3. Verse 3, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now you will see from these two verses, verse 2 and verse 3, that the first activity, the first activity of the Godhead, was actually the move of the spirit of god upon the surface of the water upon the deep of the water the first activity was the activity of the spirit before we find before we found god declaring preaching speaking and saying let there be light the first of the the spirit of god at first of all move into action so it was upon the move of the spirit of god that the word of god begin to find expression so our preachers will be very ineffective if we have not allowed the spirit to go ahead through our intercession then when we speak our words will not have effect why because the spirit has not gone ahead of that has not gone ahead of us so i'm actually showing us the example of you know what jesus did in that Mark chapter one is actually the same principle that we saw the godhead operating by in genesis chapter one the spirit of god moved into action before god declared that let there be light so our words will not have effect if the if the spirit of God has not first of all gone into action, moving over lands, over territories. If we go without the spirit of God going ahead of us, we will only reap casualties instead of harvest. I pray that the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So it is very important for us to understand this clearly. Okay? It is very important for us to understand it clearly so that we uh, uh, follow this pattern. Now, apart from Jesus praying over towns, over cities, over territories, Secondly, we see Jesus also interceding for his disciples and for souls. Okay? We also see Jesus interceding for his disciples and for souls in, Je- uh, in John chapter 17. Okay? If there is any scripture that, that, that is supposed to be tagged the Lord's Prayer, it is this John chapter 17. This is the real Lord's Prayer. Okay, because in that Matthew chapter 6 that we thank the Lord's prayer, Jesus actually wasn't praying. He was teaching praying. He was teaching prayers. Okay, he was teaching the patterns of prayer. Okay, but in this John chapter 17, Jesus prayed extensively. He prayed for his disciples. He prayed even for souls that have not yet come into the kingdom. Time we pray, Lord, okay, we will, uh, for us, time will fail us, okay, to begin to read, okay, because it's a very long portion of scripture, okay, it's a very long portion of scripture, but let me just pick some verses, okay, and read, now, verse, um, um, verse, uh, verse 5, as he said, and now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory, which i had with thee before the world was i have manifested thy name unto the men which thou givest me out of the world thine they were and thou givest them me 
and they have kept thy word. Now, verse 9 says, I pray for them. Look at that. He said, I pray for them. I pray not for the word, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are mine, and all mine are thine, and thou are mine, and I am glorified in them. Okay? Now, if um, let me jump to um, verse what now? Now verse 15. He said, I pray not that thou should shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. They sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so said I them. Now there, there, there is this portion where he said that he prayed also for those who have not yet come into the fold. Okay? Now that's verse 20. Verse 20 says, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also we shall believe on me through their word. Can you see that? So it means that even we that we became believers today, the prayers of Jesus has gone ahead of us. So he said, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also we shall believe on me through their, through their word. It means that Jesus already saw us coming and interceded. That is one of, you know, the expressions of the earthly uh, 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 intercessory ministry of Jesus. He prayed ahead of time for us. Jesus knew that we are, we are coming. He knew that he knew us by name. That's the wonderful, that's, that's the most wonderful thing about it. He, he, he knew us by name. That is why the Bible even says in that Romans chapter 8, it says, those he foreknew. Can you see that? Those he foreknew, he called. Those he predestinated. Okay? Those are the people he called to be conformed to the image of his dear son. To become, to be, to be conformed to the image of his son. So he foreknew us. He knew that we are coming and he prayed ahead of time for us. He prayed ahead of time for us. And then, um, uh, in, um, you know, last, last week we, we spoke about, you know, uh, the Gethsemane experience of Jesus. Okay? And in that place also, where he drank, he actually drank the cup of the wrath of God. That is mediation. That is intercession. So he drank the cup of the wrath of God, the cup of the judgment of God against sin, against sinners. He drank it. So he, we saw that it was in Gethsemane that he had already settled the matter. He carried the cross in the garden of Gethsemane. And so the cross did not become a burden for him. And he did not give up on the way until he got to the cross and he gave himself now having said all this going back to our scripture that we read um in that hebrews chapter 9 and the one of chapter 12 that we read earlier and there is one very uh important this um scripture that i'm going to give us um as we go on very soon now in that hebrew chapter 9 okay verse 15 he said for when moses uh, sorry verse 15 for this cause he is the mediator of the new testament testament by, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament they which are called might receive the promise of eternal life Now, I quoted this, I came back to this, 
to make us to understand this that I'm going to say now. Because our pastor has established the other time that the ministry of the, 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 the office of intercession, the priestly office is more than prayer. There is more to, to you know standing in that office than just praying. Now, hope you understand that Jesus did not fully enter into the office of intercession. He did not fully enter into the priestly office. Even though he has been interceding, as I've shown us in the scripture, even though he has been interceding, but he did not fully enter into that office until he did so by death. So it means that the priestly of the priestly office of Jesus found the highest expression when he actually went to the cross. And I remember a time the Lord was teaching me about you know intercession, you know, coming into this office and these are the four cardinal points that he gave me that i'm going to give you uh, I, I know that time is not going to permit us but i'm just going to quickly rush it okay the, these four cardinal points okay there are four cardinal requirements that it will take for us to come into that office of intercession into that office of an intercessor and a, and a priest. Amen. So Jesus did not enter fully into that office of an intercessor. Okay? Living ever to make intercession for us until he fulfilled those four cardinal requirements of number one, death. Number two, burial. Number three, resurrection. And number four, ascension. Now, I, I quickly mentioned those four cardinal points, cardinal requirements that must be met that are called by, by, by the grace of God. This is what the Spirit of God called it to me. They are called the right of passage. They are called the right of passage into the stream of intercession. The right of passage into the office of an intercessor the right of passage into the office of the of a priest so a man cannot enter into that office until this right has been fulfilled you know and if you care to understand what a right means a right means a ritual that must be performed before something can be fulfilled Praise God. Now, all the, these four requirements were actually fulfilled in Christ Jesus before he entered in fully into that office where he liveth forever to make intercession for us, as the scripture says. Where he liveth forever to what? To make intercession for us. Amen. Praise God. Now, I know that you are, um, you are you are familiar with some of these terms, but let us look at that um, verse 15 of that Hebrew chapter 9 very well before I give us another scripture. He said, For this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death. So, how did he become the mediator? By means of death. So, that's the first requirement by means of death how did he become the mediator the intercessor by means of death hope we understand that a mediator is a go-between someone that stands between god and man between two parties and he did that he did not do that successfully, effectively, until he did it by his death. Praise God. 
So the first requirement is what is death. So it means that for a person, for a man to come into the office of an intercessor, number one requirement is what is death. Wow, this is this is great. The first requirement is death. So until you have died to the flesh, until you have died to self, until you have died to sin, until you have died to the world. Now I'm, I'm counting the things you have you must die to. Okay? Until you must die, until you have died to the flesh. You have died to sin, you have died to the world. You have not yet come into that office. Though you may be interceding, you know, see, there are a lot of people interceding, praying prayers of intercession in our days, no doubt, but they are not intercessors. They are not. There are many people, there are many people praying, you know, intercessory prayers okay they are praying prayers of intercession you know every day okay but you see the thing there is that they are praying fine but they are not yet priests we are talking about standing in that office is more than praying the prayers because a priest actually offers not prayer first it is sacrifice it must be the sacrifice of himself and if we are talking about sacrifice we are talking about death amen so the first thing that a priest offers the first thing that a priest offers the first thing that an intercessor offers is not prayer it is himself it is himself it is himself so it is not prayer that you offer first it is yourself and if you are talking about offering yourself it means you must die you must die to to the flesh you must die to sin you must die to the world okay now if we look at um hebrews um what is it now um hebrews chapter 3 okay verse 1 verse 2 and probably verse 3 says wherefore holy brethren partakers of the heavenly calling consider the apostle and high priest of our profession look at that consider the apostle and the high priest of our profession christ jesus now verse 2 now says who was faithful to him that appointed him as most as also moses was faithful in all his houses in all his house now the question is how was jesus faithful in god's house because the bible says who was faithful faithful to him that appointed him don't forget the best one say we should consider him what does that mean we should extract jesus we should analyze the life of jesus so, and if we are going to analyze him, the Bible says he was faithful to him that appointed him. How was he faithful? He was faithful by dying. That is what Paul was saying in Philippians chapter 2. Even he was faithful to the point of dying the death of the cross. So he was, he was faithful even unto dying the death of the cross what a shameful death so the first thing is actually what is actually not prayer but the sacrifice of himself the sacrifice of himself that was how he was able to come into that what into that office okay now let me quickly because of our time let's quickly go um in to Romans, the book of Romans, um, chapter 8. Okay, Romans chapter 8. I would have said we should first of all read chapter 6, but let us, because of time, chapter 8, verse 34. Romans chapter 8, verse 34. Please, I want you to pay. Maybe this is where we're going to stop it. Okay, I think I still have um, about 10 minutes or thereabouts. Now, 
verse 8. Now I want you to pay attention to this scripture. He said, For oh, it's not verse 38, verse 34, rather, verse 34, verse 34, Romans chapter 8, verse 34. Who is he that condemneth? Look at that. Now, let's look at it gradually. It is Christ that died. Yeah, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also maketh intercession for us? Ha, I don't know if you are seeing what I'm seeing in this scripture. Wow. Glory to Jesus. Now let me let let's go back to to the, to, to that verse 34. Who is did that condemn it? Now he mentioned different levels, different stages of the criteria that Jesus made. He said it is Christ that died. That's number one. Now yeah, that is the reason. Can you see that number two? Now, he skipped the second one in the list that I gave you, Beria. I will tell you the reason, okay, why Beria is part of it. Now, he mentioned reason that is reason again, that's resurrection. Who is even at the right hand of God? What is that? Ascension. You know, Jesus came to the right hand of God when he ascended on high. Now, after ascension, he now says, who also make it intercession for us can you see until until you know that resurrection intercession is fulfilled the bible did not say he make it intercession for us so it means that for us it's just like that hebrew chapter 9 verse 15 that we saw also see it means that Jesus came into that office perpetually to make intercession as an intercessor, as a priest forever, after fulfilling these requirements. Okay, now let's quickly go back to Romans chapter 6. Let's see, let's see something about burial. Romans chapter 6. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, verse let me just read verse 4 okay he said therefore we are buried therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the father even so we also should walk in newness of life amen we also should walk in newness of life now he, he spoke about burial here that we are uh, you know we, we are buried with him okay by baptism into his death now if you look at after the death of jesus the next thing that happened was that he was buried okay why is that necessary why didn't they just leave his body and then the third day he resurrected <laughs> no there is a reason why he was buried See, the proof of death is actually burial. Mm. Oh, I just, I just hope you understand this. <clears throat> when, you, you know, naturally, we are all familiar that after a man dies, what happens? They bury them. They bury them. Now, burial is actually a proof that a man has truly died. Have you witnessed families where a, a loved one is lost uh, maybe a loved one dies and then uh, you see some family members you know because they seem to be poor they didn't cry they didn't cry but uh, have you witnessed that but when that loved one is about to be buried at the burial ground everybody usually break down in tears even people who have not been crying before when they get to the place of burial they break down in tears. You know why? It is because at that point it is dawning on them that this person is truly dead. It is at that point they may not be believing, they may they may all this why they may be thinking that maybe it's just a joke, maybe it's just a dream that this person is dead. But when they get to the place of the barrier, it truly becomes very apparent to everybody that 
mm -mm. this person is not faking it he has truly died so a man that has not been buried may actually be faking death may be faking death and now now we need to understand this we need to understand this thing about burial now now i said i I said burial is the proof of death okay the proof of death now it is in the you know burial is the womb of waiting okay now i'm interpreting it to us as intercessors now burial is actually the womb of waiting that a man will wait in the waiting room that until god comes he's not going to live there knowing fully well that except god comes except god speaks i'm not going to leave this waiting room now let me quickly say this to you see Many activity that a lot of us are engaging are, are, are engaging is a proof that we have not yet died. Many running here and there, Delta Skater is a proof that we are we have not yet died. Because a dead man we have no motion. A dead man is a waiting man. That is why I said the proof of death is what is burial. Burial is is a space. Amen. Praise God. I'm sorry for the next word. Now, burial is the waiting room of waiting. Okay, that on knowing fully well that on, unless God comes, you are not going to leave that place. There is no motion. So the proof of a dead man is that a dead man is a waiting man. A dead man is the man who, who does not engage in any activity or until God speaks. A dead man is a man who does not have hope of, uh, of engaging in any motion until God comes until Jesus speaks. Now, Jesus was buried. After he was buried, do you know that until God came, he was there. The fourth day, he was in the grave, still buried. The second day, he was there, still buried. No motion. The third day he was there, still buried until God came by the power of the Spirit to come and resurrect him. So the proof that Jesus actually died is that he waited in the grave for three days. And until God came by the power of the Spirit of God, he did not resurrect. He did not gain motion. He did not gain motion. Many of us are in, you know, many of us are, are, are are too full of motion even when god has not spoken it is a proof that we are not dead it is a proof that we have not experienced death oh please are you with me do you understand what we are talking about this evening this night okay yes, yes, so yes, the yes. proof of of death is what is barrier and that's waiting we see a dead man a dead man is not in a hurry many of us are in a hurry it is a proof that we are not dead a dead man is a man that is not in a hurry. He is waiting. So Jesus did not, you know, resurrect until the Spirit came. And so a dead man will not resurrect into actions until the Spirit speaks, until the Spirit comes, until God, until God gives him motion. So it is the Spirit of God that gives us motion. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Now let me quickly... Talk about the the, the 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 third thing. It is resurrection. So we've spoken about death, burial. Then the third one is what is resurrection. That Romans chapter eight made us to understand. Okay, in that verse thirty-four, he said, 
that is risen again that is risen again now the question is what is resurrection praise god what is resurrection if you look at that um um in romans chapter 6 i'm going back between chapter 8 and chapter 6 before because those two scriptures are very important now that chapter 6 verse 4 the last statement in that verse 4 he said okay he said even so we also should walk in newness of life okay let me read the whole of that verse 4 therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that life as christ was raised up can you see raised up that's resurrection from the dead by the glory of the father even so we also should walk in newness of life so it means that resurrection is not true until we see the newness of life in you the resurrection life is actually a life that manifests in newness of life that is what we are saying the resurrection life is a life that manifests in what that manifests in newness of life so a, an intercessor that has experienced death burial and resurrection is a is a man that walks in what in newness of life please don't forget we are looking at the requirements that qualifies you into the office of an intercessor a man who stands in the office of an intercessor is a man that has come into newness of life your prayer can never be effective if you have not passed through death barrier and resurrection into new life praise god okay so so is that who that is risen again who is even at the right hand of god so the the fourth thing is what is ascension 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 is that who is even at the right hand of god that verse 34 romans chapter 8 who is even at the right hand of god who also make it intercession for us you can see so intercession did not come into into view until the bible says that he is at the right hand of god meaning that he has ascended and if you look at ephesians chapter you know chapter 4 he spoke about jesus ascending and giving gifts wow this is also powerful jesus ascending and giving gifts he gave some apostles some prophets some evangelists some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints do you know what that tells you it means that until you have experienced the ascension life you are not a gift and you cannot give gifts to your generation i don't know if you heard what i just said now until jesus passed through that stage until he ascended he did not become a he did not release gifts he did not release gifts to to mankind he did not release gifts to the world so until you have experienced the ascension life as an intercessor you are not a gift and you cannot release gifts to your generation so the ascension life is a life of what of of resurrection uh, is a life where a man has become a gift and he releases his life becomes a gift and he releases gift to his generation now please let me make you to understand why are these processes important why is death barrier resurrection and ascension important why it is because an intercessor is a breed he is a kind of man that stands in or let me let me say that sits in partnership with god that wields 
power on behalf of God. And if he has not died to self, to sin, to the world, if he has not come to the place where he can no longer gain motion except God speaks, that's barrier, until he has come to the place where he has resurrected and he's come into newness of life until he has come to the place where he has ascended to the right hand of god mm. if he tries to use power it will be to the detriment of mankind instead to save mankind oh i don't know if you understand what i'm what i just said now what i just said now yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Sitting at the right hand of God. See, the right hand of God is more than a chair. He's not a chair. He's not just a chair. He's not a chair. The right hand of God is actually talking about a place of authority. A place of power. So that is the position of an intercessor. And that position is a place of partnership with God. Where you are wielding power on behalf of God. So if, if the intercessor is a man who has not died to sin, to self, to the world, he will use the power to sponsor his, his own agenda. He will move and act when God has not spoken. And that will be to the detriment of men. That will be to the detriment of men instead for their good. So as an intercessor, you must die if you will come into through partnership with God, where you will you where you wield power on behalf of God. You you God cannot commit power into your hand until you have died. That's what we are talking about. God will not commit power into your hand until you have experienced barrier. Because you see, that you have power does not mean that you must use it. Uh, that you have power does not mean you must use it. You must never move until God speaks. That is barrier. That is the womb of waiting. That we will wait here until he speaks. The fact that you have mi- billions does not mean that you should begin to speak. You, you should begin to spend. Did he ask you to spend it that's what we are saying so that you power has been committed into your hand does not mean that you now begin to you know use power anyhow you don't use it until he commands it so that you will not be using god's resources to sponsor your own agenda that is why death is important that is why barrier is important so intercessors are men who have died to, to see, to the flesh, to sin, to the world. They are men who wait on God in the womb of barrier. Barrier in the womb of waiting. Who become who have become powerless, even though they are power with God. Yet they are powerless. They cannot do anything until God says it. Until God speaks. And who have come into newness of life so they cannot use the power they have to sponsor their own agenda but to glorify God at this point brethren I want us to pray 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 are you here please I want us to pray I want I want us to cry unto God and say Lord take me to the cross take me to the cross Libra shuta di kabahina kocha de boko shalanante kokrotus kekeke 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 kokrotus Lord, can we Lord, cry Lord, unto Lord, Jesus? Lord, can we cry unto God and say, Lord, Jesus, oh, take me to the cross. Take me to the cross. Lord, take me to the cross. Oh, take me to the cross. Oh, take me to the cross. 
Let me die to sin. Let me die to the world. A man who has not died, if power is committed to him, he will use it to sponsor the flesh instead of the agenda of God. That is why he to cry unto God and say, Lord, take me to the cross. Oh, take me to the cross. Oh, take me to the cross where your love poured out. Take me to the cross, Lord. Bring me your mighty Lord, I lay me down. Read me of myself. I belong to you. Oh, Lead me, lead me to the cross. Lord, lead me to the cross. Read me of myself. Read me. Get rid of self in me. Read me of myself. I belong to you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Perfect death in me. Oh, that life of the fine expression. Oh, that life also may find expression. With that death is perfected in burial. Oh, and resurrection is perfected in ascension. Oh, Lord Jesus, a man who has died, oh, must be buried, must come to the place of waiting. And a man who has resurrected must come in to ascension. Where he gains, where he comes into partnership with God. Can you say, Lord, fulfill your requirements in me? Lord, fulfill your requirements in me. Lord, fulfill your requirements in me. In the name of Jesus. Lord, that your agenda may find expression on earth in my time. Oh, that your power may find expression on earth in my time. That your kingdom may find expression on earth in my time. Lord, fulfill your requirements in me. In the course of the devil, cause of the Lord, Baba Baba, Rusha Lina Bata Hama Bahada, Rusha Shaika Tenobosia, Ara Kupa Shimikin Daya Bani Dara Shalikin Daya, Lika Kapa Baba De 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 Lord, we thank you, glory. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you thanks. Father, we give you glory. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Father, for this privilege. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Be thou exalted in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray also that we fulfill your requirements in us. Oh, this cannot be fulfilled by the flesh. But the scripture says that the requirements of the law is fulfilled in them who walk not after the pillars. Lord, we walk not after the flesh, but by the Spirit. Let your requirement be fulfilled in us. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' most precious name we are praying. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.